Um, right. Happy birthday. Thank, oh, thank you. Appreciate that. 35, huh? 37. 37. We've got a few more playing years left in you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, David, did you get to meet your granddaughter this weekend? Yes. Uh, number, number four. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was awesome. Cute. Um, that's great. Uh, so today you have Josh starting. I know he's um, from from near here, hundred miles or so. Uh, if you talk to him about the whole crew that's coming and how excited he may be, just pitch in front of some family and friends. Yeah, I saw I saw quite a bit of him this morning with uh, Rogers jerseys on uh, in the hotel. So uh, yeah, it'll be exciting for him. Um, it's you know good homecoming for him. It's got a lot of people coming, so uh, it's gonna be exciting. He's an energy guy. Um, do you hope he doesn't get too amped up for that just because he is pitching in front of some friends or you think that's okay that he beats off that energy? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's, that's a kind of an understatement. Um, he's yeah. got tons of energy. Um, no, but he, I mean, he loves that, you know, and that's who he is. So he's going to go out there and, and, and compete and be himself and uh, looking forward to watching him pitch again and compete. Uh, and David, with, we talked about um, Romero yesterday and um, that sort of those two big outs. He's a guy, he, he signed at 20. Uh, that's that's later than most guys we see coming out of Latin America. We often see like teenagers, 15, 16. Um, what do you sort of know about um, sort of his path and sort of the, the road he's taken to get to the majors? Um, seems like it was a guy maybe who wasn't scouted so highly down there, but has made it. Yeah, no, he was, you know, he, he, you know for me, you know, seeing a guy like that and seeing him in Chicago, he, you know, he had some talent. Uh, you know, it took him a while to get up here, but, you know, he worked hard um, to get back, you know, to get up here and, and uh and we saw, you know, we saw something in him this year, and he, he did well. And uh, like I said, I wanted to get him up here before the year ended to let him pitch some games for us and see and, and see him uh, pitch in a, in a big league environment. So yesterday was a big moment, and uh, he came in with bases loaded, and I got two huge outs. So uh, that was awesome to see. He looked very poised, um, composed, you know, had a plan coming in. Um, and like I said, he got two, two balls that weren't hit hard at all and got big outs for us. He um, was signing at 20 and then debuting at 25. He also had a TJ year. So he doesn't have a ton of professional innings under his belt total. Um, is that cool for you to see a guy who's maybe still kind of raw and you guys can maybe mold some of that talent? Um, yeah. He gets, he gets yeah. kind of fresh. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is, you know, just keep an eye on his workload. Um, like you said, he had TJ, uh, but he, he feels great. I talked to him a lot about his health and he says he, he feels awesome. Uh, so we want to continue you know, to continue to build him up and keep him that way. Um, but like I said, you know, I like what I saw yesterday. Talked to him after the game, told me, you know, he did a great job. And, uh, you know, we're going to put him in situations uh, similar to that, you know, and he'll have some innings where he comes in fresh and uh, start the inning. But um, you know, I like what I see so far. You know, I mean, like I said, he, he wants the ball. And, uh, and I like that about him. Thank you. Mark Zuckerman, MassinSports.com. Happy birthday, Davey. Thank you, Mark. Uh, we haven't seen a lineup yet. Are Carter and Yadiel back in there? Yeah, Carter's in there. Yadi's in there. Um, Yadi hit fifth. Uh, Louis six. Carter, uh, we push him back to eighth. Um, but uh, yeah, they're both back in there. So we'll see how Carter how Carter feels today and how he does today. He took some swings yesterday um, to prepare himself just in case he had to come in late innings. Uh, he said he felt fine. So um, we'll see him out there today. And who's catching today? Uh, Riley Adams. Okay. So I was going to ask you about him. How how uh, tricky has it been to try to find him at bats because you want to see Kbert a lot, obviously. And I know you're trying to give Avila a couple chances here before the season's over. So, what, as Riley sort of unfortunately got caught there in, in a position where there just aren't many at bats for him. Yeah, I mean, you know, we want, you know, like I said, we want to see uh, Kbert, you know, catch, uh, get the bulk of the catching. Um, I want to catch Alex a couple times. I want him to catch uh, Corbin, and then I also wanted to catch uh, Josiah, being that he was going to be in Miami, but that was that was big for me. So uh, I told Riley, you know, I was going to get him some, you know, some games before uh, the year ends. He's going to play today, um, but he's been good. I mean, he's been he's been really working hard with Henry on his catching um, and, and working with K Long and Six on his hitting. So he gets opportunity to go out there and play today. The other day he came in and pinch hit and, and, and uh, worked a really good at bat and got a walk. You know, he took some really close pitches, but we know that about him. I mean, he's, he's got a good eye as well up there, and uh, we like that about him. So he's going to get an opportunity to go out there today and play, and, and, and I'm going to evaluate him and see how he does. Yeah, do you feel like you've, you've sort of already seen enough of him that you don't – not that you don't want him to play, but you have a good sense of what he is and what he can do going into to next year without playing a whole lot down the stretch? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I really believe. I mean, uh, you know, he's going to get an opportunity to play. You know, uh, play quite a bit, as you know, uh, this day and age. You know, a catcher that catches every day, it's, you know, they need days off. So, um, you know, next year coming to spring training, he needs to be ready. Uh, he's going to out, get a lot of opportunity to catch in spring training, and we'll see where he's at. Um, different subject here. I know, out of necessity, you've had to ask a lot of relievers to go multiple innings at times this year. Ideally, do you feel like moving forward, you guys would benefit from having someone who that's actually like their role that that you kind of consistently are getting multiple innings out of them so that you don't necessarily have to push guys who are uh, more likely to be one inning relievers? Yeah, I'd like to I, I would really like to get along, uh, you know, just one one, maybe two long guys, guys that could could, could do it, do it consistently. Uh, unfortunately, this year with, you know, with everything that went on, um, a lot of these guys, we had to push them to try to go um, two innings. Uh, yesterday, we tried to get Murphy to go out there, you know, knowing that he's, he has been a starter, he has been stretched out. So, but for me, you know, um, if we had, if we had other guys that could come in, he probably would only pitch that one inning. Um, but even though the mat, you know, the matches were still pretty good. Uh, you know, I just don't want to, especially this time of year, you know, trying to get those guys in and get, get them out and not, uh, not hurt anybody for the year end. So, uh, but yeah, I would definitely like to have a guy or maybe two that could give us uh, multiple innings. Is that something that's almost um, you kind of have to prepare them for it coming up and, and like in spring training early in the year that it's hard to just ask someone as a season plays out. Okay. We just, we need two innings from you tonight, as opposed to someone who's just used to kind of doing that all along. Yeah. You know, the other thing, the other thing too, is you, you keep an eye on which guy ha has not been used and talk to the guys. Hey, look, you, know, you haven't been out there in three or four days. You know, we may need to, you to get four or five outs today. Are you available? And, uh, you know, and, but I, t you know, with that being said, we'll have, you know, we'll have to watch the pitch count. We have to make sure that they, you know, they get through the first inning before we can send them out to the second <laughs> inning. So, uh, but yeah, you know, uh, I, you know, come next year, we will try to find a guy out of spring training that, that could give us, you know, two plus innings uh, and kind of keep them that way. You know, the one, one guy, you know, there's a guy that uh, pitches for the Mets, Lugo, who, who, you know, he, he's done that role for a lot of years and he's been, he's been really good at it. So uh, hopefully we can find a guy like that, that, you know, Hey, he can pitch the, the sixth or seventh inning um, and get us through those two innings. And then you got your back in the bullpen ready to go. Patrick Riggins at Federal Baseball. Hey, Davey. Happy birthday as well. Uh, Thank you, Patrick. I was reading a bunch of quotes from the players over the last week about watching Juan Soto and what he's doing. I just kind of wondered what he's like as a leader with the team, if he's a vocal guy, if he's just a lead-by-example guy, which is a great example for other players, or how that's changed at all since the trade deadline. No, he's been um, – you know what? He's, he's kind of a quiet leader, but uh, whenever he wants to have a conversation – He'll go up to a certain individual and talk about different things. Uh, a lot of guys, these young guys, they've been watching him hit. Um, they've been asking him questions, you know, throughout the game. They they sit back and they watch videos. I've seen him watch a lot of videos with Louie uh, talking about pitch selection and, and what he feels like the guys are going to do and and, um, and and pitch location stuff like that. So he's been he's been really really good. Uh, you, know, um, you know, like I said, you know, we had we had conversations, multiple conversations about. Hey, just, you know, I just want him to be him. Don't feel like, you know, you got to carry this team. Just go out there and do what you do best. And uh, he's accepted that. And, and as you can see, he's had an unbelievable second half. When you did have those conversations around the deadline, did you talk to him about his role, like leadership role or anything like that? Or was it just about staying focused on the field and not letting that distract him with all the changes that were made? Yeah, you, you never, you, for me, you, you, you never talk about uh, leadership. That comes within. Um, and that's something what I did talk to him about He said, you know, that I said that, you know, that you, you could see that we're getting younger. You're a guy that's been here. You know how to win. We've been here. We won. Um, so that, you know, you know, this is your time to teach, uh, you know, and this is good. You know, this is kind of almost your team now, you know, with, with Zim, you know, being the guy. Uh, but you got you, you know, you, you got to take that responsibility. And he he said, you know, he's he's good. You know, and I told I said, but don't 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 try to pressure yourself to trying to be that guy, just be a guy. And, and I said all along that your teammates would appreciate you just going out there and playing hard like you always do. I said, but they're going to watch you. <laughs> and believe me, they're going to, they're going to watch you and they're going to learn and, and they have done that. Thank you.